Hey, what's going on everybody? Coming at you guys with another video today, and today I'm talking about stock photography. More specifically, stock photography on Shutterstock. Um, I've been on Shutterstock for a couple of years now. Uh, the first year or so, I had like four or five photos on there, wasn't doing anything with it. I was under quarantine in like May or June um, during the pandemic, and started thinking of ways to, you know, start possibly doing my stuff online and generating extra income somewhere. And I thought about my Shutterstock portfolio. And uh, today, I'm gonna tell you about two photos that I have on Shutterstock that are very random photos. There's nothing special about them. Anybody could have taken these photos. And when I say anybody, I mean anybody. I mean, six-year-old niece, anybody. Um, and both of these photos uh, together made $38.75 off of two sales. Um, so without going too, too deep into how Shutterstock works, it's to make the math really easy, it works normally on a subscription platform. So someone would pay $100 a month to use a hundred photos from Shutterstock, so they're basically paying a dollar for that photo. If they're splitting the revenue 80-20 with a photographer, and a photographer gets 20% of a photo sale, then basically the photographer would make 20 cents off of one photo. But they can also license photos individually if they don't have a subscription. When they license photos individually, you make more money. These two photos were licensed individually. So the first photo is a photo of a bunch of airplane seats on a Southwest Airlines flight. And it was a very random photo. It was like we were loading on the airplane. I thought the perspective looked kind of cool. There was no one else on the flight yet. I kind of stood up from my seat, snapped the photo, took a few different angles of it, and Three years later, I sold it on Shutterstock for 18 bucks. I mean, completely random photo. Totally random photo. Uh, nothing special about it. If you heard that, sorry about that. That was my phone. I'm gonna put it on mute for you. Um, the second photo that I sold was uh, basically when I was getting back into stock photography. Um, I hadn't gotten my camera yet. Um, so basically the only camera that I had was access to my iPhone and I started going through the apartment and I started taking photos of everything, uh, especially when I learned about editorial photography because you can upload photos of logos, companies, all sorts of stuff, um, as long as it's licensed editorial, which is like a news type photo or a, um, uh, you know, a story type photo or something like that. Um, without getting too deep into it. Um, but basically, I started taking photos of everything. I mean, I was taking photos of coffee, Tylenol. Food that we had in the refrigerator. I was taking photos of, like, cake and, like, headphones and staples and all types of stuff. This is, I, I figured, figured I would never get bored of that. Um, and then I started taking photos of the food that we had in the refrigerator. I figured I would never probably really sell any of it that well because there's a thousand other types of those photos on there. But I took a photo of this Tylenol, or, sorry, this... Uh, Benadryl, this open box of Benadryl that we had in our medicine cabinet, put it on the bathroom counter and just took a, just a simple photo of it. Again, a photo anybody could have taken with their iPhone. There's nothing special about it. And basically, it was like probably a month later, um, I had one photo sale off that photo for, it was like $18, whatever the whatever the 38.75 is divided in half. It was like 18.50 or something like that. Uh, the funny thing with the Benadryl photo was I licensed it probably eight or nine other times for like 15 cents each uh, because when the Benadryl TikTok challenge was going on on TikTok, a lot of news organizations were talking about it and they had used my photo in the articles. Uh, so I sold the Benadryl photo uh, quite a few other times too, but uh, the two individual sales from those photos were $38.75. So basically my point with this video is 
you could have a lot of random photos on your computer or even on your phone that you can join up with Shutterstock, edit the photos a little bit, clean them up, process them, upload them to Shutterstock. Sometimes it can be a pain to upload photos. You'll upload it, photo won't be sharp enough, it'll get declined, then you have to upload it again. I mean, all of the photos that I have on my portfolio now, um, I think I've got like a little, a little under 600, I think, on there now. Um, and I mean, I've probably worked on them, I don't know, eight, nine hours probably combined, nine, 10 hours combined working on the photos, which really isn't that bad. I mean, those photos are on there forever and they will make money forever, um, potentially. So um, it's really not too bad. Uh, basically since from May of 2020 until, or like June, until January right now of 2021, I've made about $64, $65 on Shutterstock, so it's not too bad, you know, and I'm, uh, I'm continuously uploading photos, so hey, in 2021, if I can make an extra two, three hundred bucks maybe, three, four hundred dollars off Shutterstock, that'd be fantastic, you know, I mean, that's a lens for my camera, or, you know, that's great. Um, so it's a great way to get started making money with you know, some of your photos. A lot of people say it's dead, you know, stock photography is just kind of a lost cause. But I think it's all about the work that you put into it. You know, if you put enough work into it and you grind it out and you're shooting good photos, um, you can do really, really well, really, really well on there. So um, that's about all I got for you on this video. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe. Uh, I got at least one new video coming out each and every week. So uh, I'll see you on the next one. Talk to you later.